Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about how we can use some plyometric variations in our training to help facilitate some skill development. So if you're someone who typically tends to do a power snatch and then struggles to go into a full snatch and that movement looks like two movements, it looks like you catch it, you stiffen and then you slowly lower. What we wanna try and work towards is pulling yourself under and getting into that fast eccentric, we're gonna be working on some variations in today's video that are gonna help facilitate that. So you can think of these exercises as skill development or overloading the skill development process, whether these exercises, you do them separate as a warm up or you do them whilst you're warming up, you can pair these together. Lots of people in a video that I posted most recently, we're talking a little bit about how, you know, that's why they use drop snatches, that's why they use tall snatches. Quite honestly, most of those things are really only focusing on the technical sides of things. So lots of coaches tend to get caught up in like technical models, how they want their lifters to move stylistically. Quite honestly, in order to recreate some of those things, you need to be a beast. And we're gonna be focusing on one of the more introductory things today, which is so those rudiment jumps that we're gonna be teaching. And let's get stuck into those. The first exercise we're gonna be working on is a deep pogo. So these movements, we're just gonna be starting on the spot. I've got the med ball for something that comes next. We're just gonna be in a deep squat. Hands are out in front and we're just going to be pulsing in the bottom, thinking about trying to get a bit of a butt wink, get really comfortable in those bottom positions. So if you can't deal with your own body weight in those postures, what hope have you got when you introduce significantly heavier loads with significantly more speed uh, than something like something rudimentary as a deep pogo. So exercise one is a deep pogo. We're just gonna be popping in and out of those positions. You can do something like three sets of 10. If that feels comfortable, what we don't wanna see is just getting nice and stiff and being fairly rigid and your body not yielding to catching your own body weight. So you wanna think about sinking in between, sinking your own body weight in between your feet, getting really comfortable in those positions. If that's feeling comfortable and you can move on from a deep pogo, we're gonna get into a pendulum one. So this is your one forward, one back variation. We can use a medicine ball to help us get comfortable in those postures. So our deep pogos are gonna look something like this. We're just going to be moving back and forth. If you have a little mat in front of you, you might just be going and taking small one meter jumps. If you have a medicine ball because you struggle with balance, maybe you don't have as great ankle mobility, you can do the exact same thing and hold a med ball. What we wanna think about is being inside a low hallway or low ceiling. So if we're in a low ceiling, we're thinking about, well, we're not gonna be jumping up and doing a squat jump and moving over those positions and being quite tall. We wanna stay quite low so that we can get comfortable in flexion. With the medicine ball, looks exactly the same. We shift the ball away from us, bring it towards us when we jump back and just get comfortable in those positions. So you can perform sets of 10 back and forth. So 20 reps all up and just try and work on getting comfortable in that position. From here, you might just sequence that into just a deep forward leap where you're starting in the back of a room. You're just thinking about rolling through your feet and getting comfortable in flexion. Those movements are very submaximal, and they're just thinking about getting you comfortable in those postures. Ultimately, you just wanna practice a variety of eccentrics so that you can just be more skillful in these positions, which is gonna significantly improve your ability to stiffen at the right times. If you're pulling up quite sore from these movements in the following days, there's a high likelihood that your movements don't look very yieldy or sinky. You're not falling into those positions. If you're getting quite sore in your quads and you're quite stiff the next day, you're probably recruiting a lot of antagonist muscle groups which are resisting the movements that you wanna be falling into. So you wanna try and think about yielding, being more relaxed, when you go through those exercises. So I'd just make sure you guys are focusing on submaximal intensity for all of your yielding work. Next variation we have, we're gonna be using a front foot elevation. This is gonna help us with controlling our center of mass and just helping us sequence uh, some easier landings. So what we've got now are three exercises we're gonna work through. The first one is a oscillatory jump lunge an alternating jump lunge, and then we're gonna get into a double dip plus jump lunge. All of those get significantly or slightly more difficult as you sequence through those movements, and you're gonna find that your ability to handle and catch your own body weight gets a little bit more challenging because the landings get a little bit more difficult to deal with. They get a little bit higher. So 
again, extremely valuable for weightlifting. We're now in a staggered stance. All we're thinking about, there's nothing really special about these movements in, in a yielding one as far as output. We're not really getting more powerful or stronger in these positions, but it's just a nice place to start. So you can go hands on hips, just thinking about popping up and down. Just trying to think about being quite sinky in these positions where most people go wrong in something like an oscillatory jump lunge is it looks like this. And they're really stiff and not really uh, allowing themselves to kind of bop into those bottom positions and get a bit of length in that back leg in the quad. So thinking about using this as a bit of a mobility exercise, we might just do another set of 10 and just think about being really sinky. We don't have to think about going for height. So my front foot is not really leaving the ground that much. Apologies if my mic's bouncing around a lot. So those can be really easy and you're just thinking about pulsing in those positions. If that feels too challenging to start off with and you've never done these before, you can just think about kind of pulsing in the bottom position or starting with an ISO. Next up, we're gonna be working on an alternating jump lunge. So these movements here, we're just going to be trying to build height across the reps. We're thinking about gradually increasing the landings. We're getting a bit of arm action to help us go a little bit higher and increase some of the output on that landing. And then we're just working on switching the legs. So it's gonna look something like this. These are a fantastic warm up and probably should be in most people's programs. So especially if you wanna sequence to a double dip jump lunge next. Two sets of 10, your legs will be burning and that's a great way to start uh, experiencing a little bit more output in some of your yielding work. If those two previous movements are quite easy, your oscillatory lunges and your alternating jump lunges, you can begin to just scale the output a little bit more. Now we're gonna be working on a double dip plus jump lunge. In these, we're thinking about just doing two little pulses, two little oscillatory ones, and then trying to create a pretty powerful impulse, try and drive ourselves up nice and high, and then we can bring the legs up if we want. We don't have to when we're first starting. And then what we wanna do is on that landing, allow ourselves to sink, thinking about just doing two little pulses, jump up and then land. These are gonna be the pliers in the program where you can certainly build towards some more intensity once you've done your more rudiment versions. Hopefully that's helpful and you guys can understand how a snatch balance can be considered more of a yielding variation and how you're falling into those positions. If you're tensing up and getting quite stiff, yes, we want rigidity through our upper body, but our lower body needs to sink and yield into those positions. In something like a power snatch, yes, we're after a lot of stiffness, but in our full variations, if we can't fall into those postures, then that's definitely an issue for us. So, now you can probably warm up or sequence that into a heavy set of snatch balances where you're working on just thinking about pressing snatch balance and dropping yourself under the bar a lot faster or doing a dip and drive and working on just your regular snatch variations or snatch balance variations and then loading that. So thinking about building to a heavy set, top double, top triple, or whatever you're working towards in your sessions. Making sure that your velocity the speed in which that you're falling into the bottom is the most important variable that you're working on in these snatch balances. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know and let me know if you do try those plyo variations and I will speak to you guys soon.